Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and today we are going to talk about wireless control of your stage lighting. Because if I get any question more often, now I don't know if this is the, the question I get the most often or not. Regardless, question that I get a lot is, okay, how do I control some regular old, you know, standard stage lights wirelessly? Okay, um, a lot of people want to run their lights wirelessly, and it's understandable. Uh, we've got wireless microphones, we've got uh, wireless, you know, video stuff sometimes. Uh, we've got wireless cell phones, of course. The phone's not stuck to the wall anymore. Um, and if it is, it's an internet-based phone now, right? And people want to run their lights wirelessly, which is not necessarily a bad idea. But at the end of the day, um, there's really three basic ways to run lights wirelessly. And I want to talk about those in this video and give you some pros and cons. Because when set up well, wireless control of lighting is incredible. It is just such an awesome thing to be able to put a light out there to be able to control things wirelessly. But when set up poorly, or if there's a lot of congestion in the Wi-Fi airwaves, uh, you can really have a lot of problems, okay? So let's talk about the different ways to control things wirelessly, and we'll use the audio analogy a lot today. Um, so, if you're up for that, give this video a like, subscribe, and let's get going. The first thing most people think about when running lights wirelessly is wireless DMX, okay? Where you've got a light with an antenna on the back, probably, or internally, and somewhere, you know, near your console, you've got a box that plugs into your console and shoots out that DMX wirelessly, okay? Wireless DMX can be great. Now, my big caveat here is if it's a permanent installation, if this is a church you're installing or a venue or something like that, and the lights are being hung permanently or semi-permanently, just run a wire. It's often easier and the same cost and more reliable than wireless, okay? However, if you're doing something like, you know, putting out a bunch of uplights around a ballroom or moving things around a lot, then using wireless DMX can be a great way to get control of these things. The biggest thing that you need to look out for is what wireless channels are you on and are you getting any interference there? You can get on your phone or tablets a app that will allow you to look through the wireless space, but ultimately, finding a good channel is... Um, often getting out of the 2.4 gigahertz wireless space. So when it comes to wireless DMX, you, you do have a couple options, and this applies to any of the three ways that we're talking about in this video. Okay, just as a brief overview, when you're talking about running wireless DMX, it's typically going to be in the 800 megahertz range, it could be in the 2.4 gigahertz range, or it could be in the 5.6 gigahertz range. Okay, which is not 5G, it's 5 gigahertz. And the difference between these three is that down in the 800, there's often a lot of free space, but the devices that speak in that range, you know, often are, um, you know, more expensive. Then we've got 2.4 gigahertz. This is commonly known as the Wi-Fi range, though it's only one of the two. And it has 12 available channels, but when you choose a channel, you're strongest on that channel, weaker on the channels on either side and you end up taking up about four channels. So that means that if you're in a space that has congested wireless, which is not necessarily a major metropolitan area, it could just be a venue that's just spouting out Wi-Fi on every possible channel and being a pain in the butt, you're gonna have issues. Okay? Now there are 14 channels, um, 12 are available for Wi-Fi, and some wireless DMX systems um, do allow you to use channel 14. And that often is your most reliable, okay? Um, every area is going to be different. They'll even change over time. So grabbing an app that allows you to scan the Wi-Fi on your phone or tablet and finding the best channel is your best success with wireless DMX. 5.6 gigahertz, on the other hand, uh, same deal where you take up your channel and a little bit on either side, but there's 36 channels instead of 12, so there's a lot more there, okay? But ultimately... Um, wireless DMX often isn't what you need. When we talk about running wireless DMX, it's not that we're taking a lighting console and sticking an antenna on the back, 
and being wireless. And it's not that we have a tablet that connects wireless directly to the lights. That's coming and there are some systems that allow you to do that with basic control. But overall, that's not the popular way. So if you're looking, maybe you run lights for a party band or it's your church, but you want to be able to walk around, um, then you actually don't want wireless DMX. It's a separate issue. You may or may not use wireless DMX, but having wireless control is actually a separate thing. And there's two ways to make this happen. I said there's three things in this video. One was wireless DMX. Two ways to get wireless control of your lighting console. Um, the first is to use something like the Light Shark. I like these guys a lot. It's made by WorkPro in Spain. Um, and the cool thing about the Light Sharks is they have a basic built-in Wi-Fi router. You know, it's kind of like the Behringer X32. I know that's a curse word to some people, where some of them have a Wi-Fi antenna in them. It's an okay wireless antenna. It works for a lot of smaller gigs. If you're doing bigger stuff, you would supply your own router. But the benefit of something like a Light Shark is that it's going to sit there, and it's plugged into your DMX, and it's plugged into power. And then you just connect to it wirelessly. So the only thing you're doing wirelessly is the control, is the, the interface, basically. The look and feel on the screen, entering commands. That's all that goes out wirelessly. Most of the information going on is the information coming out through the DMX to your lights. That's all happening wired. So the big benefit here is... Even if your Wi-Fi drops out, even if you have trouble connecting, even if your tablet dies, this thing, the Light Shark, or LS Core, or LS One, are still running. They're still going, and that's why I like systems like this. You can do that with Onyx too, by the way. You can set it up on a computer. You can uh, connect as a standalone or as a uh, master slave, and you know you can have a second unit or Touch OSC and control Onyx from afar, okay, over a Wi-Fi network. And then the third way that you can do wireless is the scenario often, either you're using a tablet with a program like Luminaire, which I'm not a huge fan of, um, or similar, and you want to basically make your signal from where you're sitting, front of house, maybe it's in the back of the venue, and you want to send all of that signal wirelessly to the front of the venue. How do you do that? Well, wireless DMX is one option if you only have one universe. But if you have multiple uni universes of DMX, that's often not the best option. And we can set up SACN or ArtNet, though SACN is a little better for this, um, to go over a standard computer network. So this is where you, you go out and, you know, buy something on the low end of commercial grade. I like Ubiquiti Unify. Um, they're a good system of Wi-Fi. And you can do a point-to-point -point where you at front of house have your wireless plugged in you know your you've got your router set up here in your access point you shoot your wireless across the room to your other access point it receives it and from there you go to a network dmx device to an you know to a sacn node or maybe you go directly to an artnet enabled fixture whatever so that's the third way we can go wireless um Again, the cons on this one are the same cons that we had for number one, wireless DMX. At the end of the day, if your wireless fails, your whole show goes down, okay? Uh, with this kind of system, sure, you could have your primary, like if you're doing it with Onyx, you could have your primary or your master computer backstage and just be controlling it from front of house. Um, but that's where something, a system like the Light Shark or others that... Um, allow you to control the console wirelessly um, means that maybe this light shark was backstage, maybe I've got this LS1 backstage, maybe I've got the LS core backstage. I control it from front of house over that long distance. If the signal would drop, I can run backstage, plug in my network, or just stand really close to it and probably get a good signal again and be able to run my show, maybe standing side stage or something like that. So. Those are three ways to run your lighting wirelessly, and it's an area where I see a lot of confusion. So hopefully this video helped make it more clear for you as you think about running lights wirelessly. What part of it is it that you're looking to run wireless? Let me know in the comments below and uh, give this video a like and a subscribe. And if you're brand new to lighting, you want to check out my free guide on getting started with lighting, you can go find it over at LearnStageLighting.com.
www.ghostbusters.com we've got here on the screen. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in our next video.